I sit at my cubicle all day in front of a computer. We don't deal with the public, so at least I don't have to show up to work in a suit and tie. <laughs> I'm a state employee in the unemployment department. The formal name is the Employment Development Department, EDD. EDD, every day is different. <laughs> Bullshit. Every day is the same. But on occasion, the big boss goes on the PA system and announces so-and-so is retiring, then plays the song Celebration by Cool and the Gang. <laughs> Everyone stops what they're doing, stands and applauds while so-and-so walks out the door for the last time. Being one of the youngest in my office, I'm usually clapping the slowest and shaking my head like, you lucky motherfucker. <laughs> Can I retire now too? Days when that happens, I sit back down, but I don't immediately go back to work. I give Patty, my cubicle mate, the look, and we stare at charts and figures and calculate how many more years we have to sit here before we get a standing ovation and retire too. It always ends in a sigh. Shit, I should just play the lotto. <laughs> the next best thing to do aside from daydreaming about retirement is daydreaming about vacation. Patty is well-traveled tra uh, and isn't bothered when I come back with pictures and stories. She does the same. It's a healthy distraction from being a paper pusher slash desk drum. I recently be uh, came back from vacation and I'm still daydreaming about my trip. I went home to the Philippines. I took a round trip flight from San Diego to Manila with an hour and a half layover in Tokyo. The plane was a Boeing 787 with extra leg room, LCD touchscreens in the back of the headrest where I could choose my own in-flight movies, automatic tinting windows, complimentary headphones, a blanket and pillow, and a meal every three hours or so. I felt like I came a long, long way from the original plane trip to America, although I barely remember it. All I remember really was this continuous sound of the blaring plane engines, the windowless bare walls with wires showing, and a stale metallic smell. We sat facing the rear of the plane. It was a beast. The plane I rode back then at age three when I first came to America was a Lockheed C-5 Galaxy a military plane. It was a MEC flight, which stands for Military Airlift Command. My pops enlisted in the Navy when I was born, and three years later was able to petition for my mom, older sister, and me to immigrate to the USA. We were chasing the American dream. Now at 31 years old, I was overdue for a visit to the Philippines. When I arrived, I was introduced to my cousins who thought I'd be a snobby American. But we got, but we got acquainted by universal pastime. Drinking. <laughs> One night my cousin asked, how much is a pack of cigarettes in the US? I told him, five to six dollars in California. Wow, here a pack of cigarettes is only 100 pesos. That's like 250. <laughs> then he asked, how much is it for a beer? I told him, three to six dollars depending where you go. Here it's only 80 pesos. That's only $1.80. <laughs> Here in the Philippines, the vices are cheap. Even if you have no job, you could still smoke and drink. <laughs> My cousins got me to eat all these exotic foods, barbecued chicken intestine, duck fetus, goat brain, pig blood, a one-day-old chick, and dog meat. What? They made me sing Ilocano songs on karaoke. I had to match them beer for beer and shot for shot. My Ilocano sucked, so my family let me speak in English. All of them thought I was rich, but if you have 44 Philippine pesos for every American dollar, you feel kind of rich. So I paid their way to vacation in Boracay, an island resort. A package deal round trip from Manila to Boracay for three days, two nights, was less than, the night, less than the cost of a night in Vegas. We rode sailboats and ATVs, got massages, and I sat on the white sand under coconut trees drinking San Miguel beer. I got badly sunburned, but I felt alive. 
I was able to convince them that I wasn't snobby, but still an American. So I revisit my roots. The Igorot Filipino is the indigenous people in the mountain regions, and I have Igorot blood in me. They retain their culture while many of the lowland Filipinos were heavily influenced by the Spanish when they colonized. In World War II, the Japanese were on the boondocks, a butchering of the Tagalog word bundok for mountain. Some Japanese soldiers raped the Igorot women. When the Americans came, they didn't. They were interested in the indigenous people and wanted to know more about them and were peaceful. They helped build roads and established cities in the mountain regions. One such city is my hometown, Baguio City, in the province of Benguet. Because of the high elevation, it's known as summer capital. Everyone goes there for the cool climate to escape the summer season heat. My uncle and I toured the city and we looked at plots of land for sale. My uncle said, you can buy a plot, then we build a house for you. Once it's built, rent it out. It will be steady income. When you retire, you come back, live here. On my last morning there, I sat with my Lola a while on her porch and talked with her. She's shorter than I remember, standing less than five foot. I bent down as she took my arm. She pointed out to the mountains and mentioned that most of the trees are gone, replaced by houses. The mountains in view used to be covered with pine trees and there would be blooms of sunflowers around this time. The landscape changed through the years. She asked if I remembered and I said no. A generation and a language gap sat between us. I know her from the stories my mom told me growing up. She barely knows about me. You work? Yes, one polola. Good, you are tall now. You were once baby. You are strong, always strong, always climb, always run and play, always laughing, laughing. Not married, no children, no, Han Polola. You choose your wife now. <laughs> I smiled and, and said, okay. I laughed it off at first. She was married early. At 50, she had 10 children, and out I came, her fourth grandchild. She's 80 now and frail, but she has many children to care for her and many more children, grandchildren to care for them. My Lola didn't have a retirement plan. She just had a lot of kids. <laughs> I realized she just wants what's best for me, the same way my parents did when they used to nag me about choosing a good major or choosing a right job. She still lives in the house my Lola built, the same one my mom grew up in, same when I spent my first years of life. From all the things I've forgotten about this place, for some odd reason it still smells the same as I remember at three years old. Before I knew it, I was on a bus ride to Manila and a plane ride back to America. In the Philippines, the term to call people who leave and return is balik bayan, or returnees. You have to leave to come back. Back at work, I push some paper around and I'm daydreaming. Patty and I look up private islands for sale on the internet. We look up how much the lottery is up to. California's unemployment rate is 8.1%, third highest in the nation. There are 3.5 million people in California without jobs. I don't know what the statistics are in the rest of the US, but many companies are outsourcing their work to cheaper labor in other countries like the Philippines. Patty reminds me at 50, as long as we have at least 20 years of state service, we could retire if we want to. I tell Patty I got a full body massage for an hour in Boracay for 500 pesos. She looked up the exchange rate and saw it's about 11 bucks. Patty gives me the look and she immediately starts looking up property in Boracay. <laughs> I scratched my sunburnt legs through my jeans. I was gone on vacation for about a month my coworkers come by and almost don't recognize me. They compliment my tan. But I always look tan. Do you mean my sunburn? Come on, how was the Philippines? I've never seen so many Filipinos in my life. <laughs> no, really, how was it? I channel my Igorot Filipino heritage and I tell them very proudly, I ate dog meat and I saw them butcher a goat. 
Uh, oh, nice. I laugh to myself and sit in front of my computer and act like I'm working. I think to myself, I'm doing okay. But then I contemplate the possibility of retiring in the Philippines, and I daydream. The American dream is just that.